Hello students, Michael Sanchez here. Welcome to Spotlight Saturdays. Every Saturday at 5 o'clock I'm doing a class helping some students out, out there to learn the violin better. Uh, getting a lot of requests lately for uh, third position talk and uh, help. So I'm going to be talking about that today and going over the exact letters on the fingerboard in third position as well as uh, a lot of other things that are going to help you guys regarding theory. We have some students with us today. I appreciate you guys watching. Adeline, uh, Amanda, Eric, and Mr. Scott. Um, hope you guys will get a lot from this uh, class. So let's start off by just, uh, um, first of all, um, if you guys want to grab your finger finder tool, uh, this can be found on Amazon.com. A lot of you guys have the finger finder. So if you guys want to go ahead and grab that. Uh, there's different sheets uh, that the finger finder comes with. We're going to be really looking into the third position sheet today. So basically what we can do when we put the third position sheet in here is look where the fingers are going in third position for different keys. So for example, C major, these are where all the fingers are going in C major. And we're going to actually talk about what each of those are in third position and hopefully by today you guys will get a better feel for where those notes are. And just to let you guys know, uh, as far as third position goes, the fingers are closer together. So a whole step in first position is this far away. A whole step in third position is this far away. You see the difference? So there's definitely, as, as you go up the fingerboard, the, the higher positions go, the closer your whole steps get. So even when you start to get really high up here, this is how far a whole step is. So third position is a little bit smaller definitely than first position. That also means that your half steps are very, very close, like this close compared to, for me, this close. And you can kind of feel it out with your tuner. I highly recommend that you guys get some sort of tuner. Also uh, on the iPhone, INS Tuner Lite works really good for finding notes. So let's actually spell out all these notes in third position. Let's start, if you guys want to grab a piece of paper here, what I'm going to do is write G, D, a and E on the very top. So these are our strings. So I'm actually going to write, uh, put a line all the way down this sheet of paper here. Like this. Okay, and if you guys look at your finger finder, you guys notice that there's all these like black dots back here. That's all first position. So we don't really, we're not going to really be talking about first position as much. It's going to be more third position stuff. So we still, I think, would be good to write out um, notes in first for some of you guys that don't know where those are at. So let's start off on the G string. First finger is A. Second finger is B. Third finger is C. And fourth finger is D in first position. One, two, three, four. Okay? Now in third position, this three gets replaced by a one. So three slash one. And then here I'm going to put four slash two. So once you get into third position, you replace where you normally would put your four, you're going to put a two. So here's your one, here's your two. And then here, we're going to have three and four. So you got one, two, three, and four in third position. Third finger on the G string in third position is E. And then next to that is F. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four. These are half steps. C to D to E are whole steps. Okay, let's look at the finger finder tool. Let's show you how that looks on the finger finder. Let's go ahead and go to C major. So where this blue dot is, that's a C. Where this second finger dot is, that's a D. 
where this 3 is, that's an E. And then a half step, like I said earlier, that's an F. Okay? All right, let's go over to the D string. First finger on the D string in first is E. Second finger high is F sharp, followed by G. So this is a space here, one to two, half step three, four, E, F sharp, G. And then next one's going to be A, B, C. So in third position, your 1 is going to go on G, your 2 is going to go on A, your 3 is going to go on B, and your 4 will be touching the B, C. It's like that. So there's a, whole, there's a whole step between G to A, whole step between A and B, and a half step between B and C, just like it was on the G string. These are whole steps, whole step, whole step, whole step. Okay? All right. Let's go on to A. So first finger on the A string in first position is B, followed by C sharp and D. First finger is B, C sharp, D. Fourth finger would be E. And then in third position, F sharp and G. So if you put your fingers on in third position, here's your one, two, three, four. D would be the first finger. E would be the second finger. F sharp would be a high three third finger. Whole step right there. And G would be a half step, touching the F sharp. Okay? E string, first finger would be F sharp, followed by G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D. So in first position, if you have a first finger down, it's an F sharp on the E string. If you have a high two down, it's a G sharp, followed by a half step A. And then third position, your first finger would be on an A, followed by a B whole step, followed by a C sharp whole step, D. So all the way across, three to four, these are all half steps. All the twos are a whole step from the one. So that's a whole step to there. Okay? Very good. All right, let's show you on the instrument. So everything I just talked about, I'm just going to show you on the instrument. Okay, so in first position we have G, A, B, C. So now if we went in the third position, you're going to put your 1 where your 3 goes in first. And then you're going to put your 2 where your 4 would go in first. And just like I showed you, this is C, D, F sharp, sorry, C, D, E, F. Okay, C, D, E, F. Okay, on the D string, D, E, F sharp, G. You're going to put your first finger in third position where your three would normally go. That's a G, A, B, C. G, A, B, C. Okay? A string. A, B, C sharp, D. Where you normally would put your three in first position, you're going to replace. And this is actually where we normally shift in the scales. When we're, when we're shifting in the third position, we shift on this D. Amanda, I showed you that earlier. Right there, so you have D, 
E, F sharp, G. D, E, F sharp, G. On the E string, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, where you put your third finger in first, you're going to replace with a one and third. A, B, C sharp, D. A, B, C sharp, D. Let's look on our finger finder. I'll go through each of these and show you guys how this um, relates in C major here. Everything we just said is on the finger finder. C, D, E, F, having a little bit of delay here. I'm in trouble <laughs> following my finger. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, now notice that the 3 is low here because in C major it would not be C sh uh, F sharp. So it's actually showing you an F because it's touching the 2. So it's not showing you the one that I showed you up here, which is F sharp. G. And then we have A, B, C. And I showed you the C sharp earlier. D. So in the key of C major, we don't have F sharp and C sharp because there's no sharps in the key signature. So actually the threes go here in between. Okay? So let me play a um, C major two octave scale. So I'm going to follow the exact spots that you guys have been um, uh, looking at here. So we're going to start at I'm actually going to shift up into third position right away so you guys can see all the finger spots with C major. So I'm going to shift up right away. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, now F natural, G, whole step away. A, B, and the scale would end on C, but there's also a D here. If you were playing a song, it might have a D in it, but the scale would, would end here because that's a C. Now, the way I would play the scale is not the way I just did it. I would actually start in first position and then shift up into third position on the D, like this. Shift down, low two and first, that's a G. Now low one, F natural. Just like that. So earlier, uh, Amanda, we learned the C major scale, so that was kind of the uh, somewhat theory behind it as well, as far as the um, where the fingers are, are at in third. So this is a great sheet for you guys to maybe copy down and really study. So right here, all third position, all the way across. Uh, think of it this way. Uh, if you put a first finger down all the way across, it's C, G, D, A. C, G, D, A. Second finger, all the way across, D, a, E, B.
D A E B. All the way across. And then the high threes are E, B, F sharp, C sharp, E, B, F sharp, C sharp. And finally we have fourth finger, F, C, G, D. F, C, G, D. Okay, so I hope that helps uh, you guys a little bit. Uh, Amanda, we just covered this, uh, so I'm hoping maybe you have a couple questions. Um, does that make sense, everything we just kind of went over? Uh, let me know if you have any. It does. Um, the only thing that I'd like a little bit more clarification on is when you're going on the C major scale, and you're in third position going back to first position, which note you're actually shifting back into first position for. Can you recover that part? Absolutely. So basically when you're doing the C major scale, um, I was suggesting that you shift up on, I'm going to circle the note, shift up on this note. So we're starting in in first position, three, open, one, low two, three, open, one, high, uh, two, and then shift here. One, two, low three would be actually here. Space four, one, two, low three, and then three, two, one. Then you would go down on a G, which is here. G is right here between F sharp and G sharp. You'd shift down here, and then you would play the next note would be low one here. There and there. So on, on the G natural, that's going to be the first note in first position? In the C major scale, correct. Okay. Yep. Now if you were doing the uh, D major scale, this actually, this sheet would make a lot more sense with D major because you have the F sharp and the C sharp. This is actually a really good D major sheet. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, shift, D, E, high three, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. That works really good. That's the scale. And then coming back down, D, C sharp, B, A, shift down to first. G, F sharp, so these are touching, one and two are touching right here. Open E, D, C sharp, B, A, G, F sharp, E, D. I'll, I'll go ahead and do the D major scale a second. actually applies exactly to the D major scale because you have F sharps and C sharps. So everything you have, that every place you see a letter in here, that's in D. So if I go to my finger finder, every letter that I wrote on that sheet is going to be applied in this key, except for one, which I'm probably going to confuse a few people, but the C sharp here um, in third position one. It's technically um, probably confusing some people now. On the G string, it's C sharp, not C natural. So actually, it'd be a high one and third right here. That's the only difference. The C's are sharp. 
So <laughs> we're learning that next, Amanda, the D major scale on the next page. So I'll give you a little insight to the, to the next concept. OK. So Michael, um, I guess next question is, uh, um, what's a good way for us to program our brain to remember? Like, if we know where our fingering goes, but how can we remember in whatever scale we're playing in third position when we're going back to first, how to remember which note it is that we want to go back to first position in? Is it like every second note, every third note? I mean, what, what's, what's a way that you can help us to remember that? Sure. The way that I always have students do scales every time, no matter what scale it is, is we always go up on the D. Always. For scales. Always go up on D and always come down on E. So you come up on A, come down on E. That's the rule that I teach. So it doesn't matter what scale it is. This could be a really advanced scale. Always up on D. And then you always come down on E. Every single scale is that way. Uh, does that answer your question? Um, yeah. Can you actually just show us using the violin with your hand on the string like up close? As far as the shift downs? Yeah, just shift down, shift up. If you can just show us with your hand, like in slow motion, on the string. OK, so you shift up on D. This is a shift up on D. And then you can play all these notes on the E string for, you can actually keep, you know, keep going up eventually. But then we always go down here, to low 2 on the E string, or it could be high 2. Low two or high two on the E string. Always going to be in that one or two spots. That's our exit. <laughs> OK. I'll play you guys a few scales. Just watch how I do the same pattern every time. I'll play you guys um, the uh, uh, F major, and I'll play you guys um, E flat major. Watch how I always come up on A, come down on E. Downy. Does that show it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely shows it better. So it's always going to be second finger that's going to come back into first position, and it's always going to be from the third finger in first position will always be our first finger in third position. I should have said just down on E because you can actually come down if you're in fifth position. Eric, you've been interested in fifth position. Uh, we come down on a four not a two, in fifth position. And if you're in third position, you come down on a two. But you always come down on the E string, all the time. But it's just a matter of if you do a four or two. Four or two. Depending on the scale. So if you're, if the scale finishes in third position, you come down on a two. If the scale is in fifth position and you're up here, then you come down on a four. Does that make sense a little bit, Amanda? I know it's, you haven't done fifth position yet. <laughs> uh, fifth position is a little bit beyond me at this point, so I'm just kind of <laughs> making a mental note of it and leaving it at that. <laughs> Eric, so. Eric, does that make sense? Yes, yes, but uh, for the scales, I, I used the book, and I did not try to learn the pattern. So uh, I, 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 tried to, I have to mem memorize better. So, um, but yeah, today's class we covered a lot of the third position uh, notes. Hopefully you guys are more comfortable with all, where all the letters are at in third. And I highly encourage you guys to get a finger finder because, um, you know, this really helps to show what, what happens in different key signatures in third position. So, like, let's say you have a song that's an A major and you have some shifts. This is going to tell you where all these notes are going to go. Now I covered, you know, I wrote a lot of notes in here, but there's a lot of gaps that technically are there. So I just want this might be a little more advanced, maybe. So if you guys are 
don't let this um, confuse you if you're already not getting the past concepts. But there's a whole step between C and D, right? So all the way across, there's a whole step between 1 and 2. So there's actually notes all the way across here. I can write those in real quick. It'd be C sharp slash D flat. It would be G sharp slash A flat. It'd be D sharp slash B flat. And it'd be A sharp slash B flat. So in between all of one and two, there's actually there's also notes all the way across. If you're playing in sharp mode, you're going to think of them as C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, and A sharp. If you're in sharp mode, if you're in flat mode, you're going to think of them as D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat. So I mean, if this is confusing some of you, think of it in first position. You have A. You have B, and then if you play a high three, it's a C sharp, right? In first position, in third position, it'd be a high one. High one in third position would be a C sharp, or a high three in first would be a C sharp. If you're thinking flats, it'd be a low four. So you have a high four, which is a D in first position. A low four touching the three would be a D flat. See how my fingers are touching? One, two, three, touching. Okay? So there's gaps all the way across here. Just like in first position, there's gaps right in there, too. I'll write some of those in. So this would be A sharp slash B flat. This would be F. Just an F. This would be C. And G. So in here, this is an A sharp slash B flat, F, C, and G. So these are your basically your low twos in first position. If you played a low two on the G string, it'd be a B flat. If you played a low two on the D string, it'd be an F. If you played a low two on the A string, it'd be a C. If you played a low two on the E, it would be a G. So I, I didn't write those in there because I was showing you the high two, which is B, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. Eric, does that make sense a little bit? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so in here, there's also gaps between the two and the three. So let me write those ones in. The D sharp slash E flat. It'd be A sharp slash B flat. It'd be F. And it'd be C. This is going to probably start to overwhelm some people, so don't let it overwhelm you. <laughs> I'm basically showing you every single note on the violin. This is a breakdown of all the notes. If, it, if you play, um, so you have one in third position, you have two in third position. If you played a low three instead of a high three, that's what I just showed you here. This is these are low threes. You have D sharp slash E flat. You have A sharp slash B flat, F and C. So what I'm showing you right there is low threes all the way across. Before I showed you high threes. Okay. All right, you guys ready to get overwhelmed even more? There's actually one more spot. <laughs> F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. There actually is a high four in third position, which is F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. Okay? So first, third position, one. Two, three, let's say I was to do a high four away from the three, that's an F sharp. If I was to do a high four on the D string, it's a C sharp. If I was to do a high four on the A string, it's a G sharp. 
If I also do a high four in the E string, it'll be a D sharp. That's where all the high fours are. Okay. All right. Have you guys ever? Um, I'm sure you've probably done this before. Just played every single note on the piano, every one you can play. Okay. When you're doing that, you're basically doing that. You're 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 playing every single note, every single note. This is exactly what I'm showing you just on the violin, how it all works. So I can actually do that on the violin. Maybe that'll be good for you guys to see. Let's go through every single note. G, A flat, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, a sharp, B. That's all first position. So uh, that's why it's good to practice chromatic scales. I just played every note. <laughs> okay, now you can do that exact same thing I just did in third position. C, C sharp, D, E, sorry, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, A flat, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp. So on. <laughs> so I just play all the notes in third position now, which is exactly what you saw here. I just play all of these notes. Hey, Michael, can you explain what you mean by chromatic scales? Sure. A chromatic scale is when you don't have any whole steps between one note to the next. You play every single half step. It's kind of like on a piano. You can play all the white keys, but a chromatic scale is when you play not just the white keys, but you also play the black keys. You play every single one. That's a chromatic scale. It's a lot easier to do on a piano. <laughs> On the, violin, on the violin, it's a little bit tougher. Michael, for those of us that want more work on scales or, you know, really understanding what you say about scales being the key to really mastering the positions in the violin, um, what books do you recommend that can just be strictly used for scales, arpeggios, and all of that, just different practicing combinations to get the fingers moving around the fingerboard? Good. Actually, the book that you got, Amanda, is really good. The... Uh, Essential Technique 2000. This covers all of the scales that are good to learn in third position. C, D, F, uh, E flat. Uh, those are the main ones that you learn in this book. And it has different songs associated with each, each, uh, each scale that you do. So it has a breakdown, like you have C major, you have the scale, you learn the scale first, and then there's a couple of songs that you can learn in third position. And then you go on to the next page, and you learn the G major scale, and then you learn a couple of songs in G, following the patterns of third position. So yeah, this is a really good book uh, that I recommend. This is what I teach out of for students. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit even more advanced than that, that's going to really teach you some different finger patterns in third. My bunny ate the corner of this, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, introduction to the Positions is really good by Whistler. Uh, this will be the book we, we work out of next, Amanda. Uh, basically, would have like, okay, in third position, you have um, this piece, which is you, uh, you should do all in third position, the entire exercise. 
And then they have ones that actually shift back and forth. And then they, actually, then they also teach you fifth position. So this is a good book. I would recommend these two. These are good. So between the Finger Finder, um, these two books, and then, of course, me to help you, you got everything you need. <laughs> hey, Michael, I also I have a book where it actually, because you mentioned the chromatics, and I was just recently introduced through this book. This is a, another uh, Whistler book, The Intermediate Scales and Bowings. And in there, for each of the major keys, they there's specifically parts with the... Um, like harmonic minors and melodic minor in there. Maybe that's another good one to recommend. I like it because I don't feel like it's over my head as somebody who's been playing for less than a year. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good too. There's a lot of books out there. Um, but basically the, uh, the purpose of all this, guys, is that you're going to have songs that sound a lot better in third position in certain spots. Uh, like what I told Amanda earlier, the purpose of third position is so that you can avoid string crossings. So, you know, this this passage. See, I had to cross strings from A to E. But if I knew third position, instead of crossing strings, I can just shift up into third. And you can get that kind of that nice slide sound instead of just. So shifting up in the third really helps tone. So that's kind of the purpose uh, behind what we're trying to teach you guys. <laughs> but you have to know where to put the fingers down in different in different key signatures, you know. So like if you're in A major, you have to know that you have to play a G sharp and not a G natural. You have to know that you have to play an F sharp and not an F natural. So you have to do high high three, not low three. So this is really important to understand where all these letters are and then understand, okay, if I'm in A major, what is sharp? F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. If I'm in F, what's flat? B flats. So instead of playing B, you got to play B flat. Or if you're in the key of B flat major, you have to play E flat. So don't play high three on G. Play low three, E flat. So this is really good to know so that when you're in third position, you know that, okay, I have to do a low three, I have to do a high three or whatever. So. Hey, Michael, yeah. one, one other question. So we always we shift up on the A string, and then we shift down on the E string. Is it the same with the G and the D string, where we shift up on the G string and down on the D string? The thing is, it's uh, it's really just the way that I teach students to do scales. It's just like kind of just sticking to the same pattern. But the purpose is because you play a lot of times on the A string in third. What I just did earlier, the um, that was on the A string. You do that a lot on the A string. Um, you play less in third position on the G and D, so that's why I emphasize scales on A and E. But it's still good to even practice an entire scale in third position. So, like, instead of starting the scale here, you, you could start it here just for practice and do it all the way across the fingerboard. So there's no real rule that's, like, universal. Um, different teachers teach scales different ways. Uh, everything is good, though. Everything teaches you technique and, and combinations. The reason why I think it's good to go into fifth position and then come down to first is because you do that very often in, in music, as well as third to first on the Eastern. You do that move a lot as well, so it's good practice. So if you practice scales that way all the time, it just it gets really um, you just really learn the muscle memory of the shifts that you should be learning. Okay. So then one other question, Michael. So with with the G and the D strings, since you say that in third position we really don't shift on those strings to third position very often. So can you give us an example, even if it's not related to third position, like when we would use the G and the D string to shift? Like what positions? we would shift to. Same idea as what we did that I showed you here. Could be on the G or D. You 
especially see that tone change on the G because it's the, the lowest, thickest string. So, I mean, that sounds a lot better. See, so it's just a matter of that it sounds good to do that kind of um, move instead of crossing strings. You avoid crossing strings a lot when you do third position and fifth position. So with the G and the D string, it's not so much the position that we're shifting to with the G and the D string. You know, it's, it's not a rule. It's more about the musical interpretation and what sounds the best. Yeah, it's, a, it's about uh, avoiding crossovers. That's a big one. And, uh, you know, yeah, tone. A lot of times there's different passages that just sound better when you're in fifth position or third position. And then the other one is just you can't you can only play so high in first position. So like if you have a really high passage, you just have to play up here because it's high on the E string. So yeah, and what you asked earlier, Amanda, about the um, you know when do you know when you should shift? Uh, a lot of times your teacher will just tell you when and write fingerings in your music. It takes a while. It takes actually a really long time to get a feel for that for exactly what you should be doing. It definitely doesn't come just snap, it would take, like, if I have a piece of music, I would have to analyze it a little bit and say, okay, should I do this shift or this shift? And I think that's unnecessary for students that have been playing under five years. I think after five years, then I would say, yeah, start to feel where you should be shifting and so on. But if, say, if we're somebody who, you know, wanted to learn to do that, what, what's a way that we can incorporate building that analytical skill in our practice, even if we just <clears> spent five minutes once a day how could we start to train our brains to think that way as we're learning the positions when we could look at a piece of a music and determine if it would be a good idea to shift? Um, well, I'll just I'll take a piece in here, actually the one that you're working on this week. <laughs> uh, so this is the, um, the Grenadiers, the British Grenadiers. So as you can see, the, the first line if you were to play that in first position, do you notice that there would be two notes on the E string? Which yes. would be Right, I have to look over because it's a delay here. Um, right there. But if you do it in third, if you do this entire little piece in third right here, you will avoid the string crossing. So just naturally, the more you play, the more you're going to feel out, you know, yeah, I don't want to cross over for one note on the E string. I want to, I want to shift up the third. So, you know, and they actually tell you that that's what you should do. So you just follow the fingerings and you practice it. But eventually, when you play enough, you just don't want to do that. You just feel that that should be a shift. I don't know if that answers your question or not. <laughs> okay. So it's about just, you know, to just kind of making a notation of, oh, we have all these notes on this string. It, it's sort of, it just sounds like it's more of a kind of just uh, being mindful of it, more or less. It's more that uh, don't worry so much about knowing when to shift uh, if you've been playing under five years. Worry more about the technique of shifting and, and doing the right things like the knuckles up. I see all the times that students are dipping down on the E string and third. I also see students um, not have their thumb consistent. Your thumb should always be following your one. It doesn't matter what note you're playing, your thumb should always stay in that position in third, even if you have a low one or a high one. Focus more on the technique. Um, don't worry so much about the, the fact that, you know, I, I have to know, you know, when I should shift. Uh, just let your teacher and the books kind of guide you in that area until you've been playing a while. Then, then, then you should, you know, be able to do that. But uh, I would say since you've only been playing a year, I wouldn't focus on that. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, guys? All right, we've had a great class, I, I think. Um, oh, Eric, sorry, go ahead. Please. When I try to play on third position, I have more difficulty with the intonation of the third and the fourth finger than in the first position. Uh, is it something that other students have uh, as a difficulty when they're, they're learning the third position? Or is it just uh, something that I have a problem of mine? 
Yeah, I mean, every student that, like, let's say a student's been playing a couple years in first, and then they start to play in third. It's like learning a new language, because it's like everything is totally different. Like, instead of playing three, you're playing one. Instead of playing four, you're playing two. It's just, it's very confusing at first. So it just takes practice. And then the other thing is the spacings are different. Mm -hmm. You know, so, like, even from third to fourth position, it gets a little bit tighter. A little bit tighter. And then as you get into fifth, it gets a little tighter yet. So every position takes just practicing it. Um, etudes are extremely important uh, because they just build muscle memory and how, how far the spacings are. Uh, using your tuner is really important. Um, but yeah, anything that involves practicing and um, working on the different combinations. Because sometimes you might have a one to a three. Sometimes you might have a one to a four. How far is that? That's all about practice and tuning, you know, using the tuner and just working on different things. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. All right. Uh, this was a great class. Hopefully you guys learned a lot from this. And uh, this, uh, feel free to email me if you have any questions, rivertownviolin at hotmail.com. You can also live chat me on my site, violintutorpro.com. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Appreciate uh, student participation. If you guys want to get in on the live uh, hangouts, all you have to do is go to my site uh, and follow directions. You, all you have to do is email me, and I'll put you into my circle. Uh, there's a link in the middle of my Violin Tutor Pro page. It's called the Google Portal. Uh, it'll teach you exactly how to get into classes, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, a lot of the students have been uh, getting to know each other and interacting. It's been a lot of fun. So hopefully we'll keep building this and uh, you know learning more uh, about the violin along the way. Again, let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you guys very soon.